I'm Nidge, and here's what I'd look like if I was a member of the Baywatch team. The beach, the sun, it's all very Australian. But unfortunately, so is sun damage. We're one of the worst countries in the world when it comes to getting skin cancer. It's estimated that two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer by the age of 70. We've all had sun protection tips drilled into us. Are you ready for the slip stop set? But how much do you know about the mechanisms that cause skin cancer? What's the difference between UVA and UVB? And SPF 8 and 15 and 40 and beyond? And do you even know what SPF stands for? How exactly does sunscreen protect you from sun damage? Do you know what SPF stands for? No idea, sorry. Sun okay. protector. Yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of SPC spaghetti. No. no sun protection something. No, I have no idea. Oh my gosh. Oh, a sun protection factor? Yes, well, SPF actually does stand for sun protection factor. So that's pretty easy. But how sunscreen works to combat sun damage is a bit trickier. First, we need to understand what's harmful about sunlight. Sunlight is composed of different photons of light, and the photons in the visible part of the spectrum are no problem at all for our skin. But those in the UV part of the spectrum, beyond indigo and violet, have higher energies and can ionise molecules within our bodies, causing problems. It ain't too cool being a sunburn fool. It ain't no fun frying in the sun. UVC light has the highest energy and is the most damaging, but it gets almost completely filtered by the ozone in the atmosphere, which is lucky. UVA penetrates deep into the skin and causes wrinkling and other visible signs of ageing in what scientists call photo damage. UVB has higher energies than UVA. It's considered the primary source of hazardous sunburn. All types of UV light can interact with DNA, which can lead to mutations and then later possibly to skin cancer. Right, so how does sunscreen stop UV then? Sunscreen is a chemical filter that can either absorb or reflect UV photons before they reach our skin. Historically, we've been more concerned about UVB because of its direct ability to burn. So many sunscreens only protect against UVB. However, some sunscreens now are also protecting against UVA, which has recently been linked to accelerating the development of skin cancer. Sunscreens that protect against both UVB and UVA are labelled broad spectrum. So how exactly do we come up with their SPF ratings? Well, basically, we shine sunlight on people in the lab. And to learn more about it... So how do we test the SPF of a sunscreen? Well, we test it on humans, yeah. and we test on spots of light, which is just equivalent to about 10 minutes in the sun. How do we calculate the SPF number? We calculate the SPF number simply by the number of seconds it takes for the exposure. If you were 10 minutes in the sun in the middle of summer, yep. you would get uh, a mild erythema, which is just starting to go pink. Yep. If you uh, applied the sunscreen, and let's say it's an SPF 30, yep. then that endpoint in time should be about 30 times as long. So if it takes 10 minutes to get erythema without any sunscreen, with SPF 30 on, it would take 300, 300. minutes. You got it. So this is exactly the spot of light that we use to imitate the sun. It's called a solar simulator. What about back hair? We know that people who are completely covered, like on the top of your head, yeah. that gives you a natural SPF of about 15. So oh, that's all right. if you're a bear yeah. in the forest, you're protected <laughs> without a sunscreen. <laughs> OK, but is it really necessary to have SPF 50? Well, if it takes about 10 minutes for you to start to get sunburnt in strong sunshine without any sunscreen on, having SPF 15 sunscreen on will give you 150 minutes for the same level of exposure, and SPF 50 would give you 500 minutes, more than nine hours and about the length of the day. So having a higher number gives you better and longer protection. And did you know tattoos do not protect your skin from sun damage or cancer? You're still susceptible to UV radiation on your ink work. And some dermatologists think that tattoos might actually make it harder to spot skin cancers if they appear at the site of a tattoo. So make sure to keep them covered up with sunscreen as well. For brown people like me, the darker melanin means I don't burn as often and the rates of skin cancer are lower. But dermatologists say all skin types can be damaged by UV rays. If you're wondering whether your shirt has a high SPF rating, actually it's called UPF for clothing, it really depends on the shirt. The colour, weave and material will all affect the UV blocking or absorbing. Some UPF measurements of a simple white t-shirt are as low as 5. Many common items of beachwear are less than 15. Less than most sunscreens. Those same measurements 
peg blue denim is pretty safe though. So double denim at the beach, you should be fine. Beyond sunscreen, some researchers are exploring the possibility of taking a pill or drinking a drink for sun protection. Others are looking at thin films of DNA that we could apply to block UV light. But there aren't yet any sufficient long-term studies on humans to say whether any of those options will work. So in the meantime, the best way to stay safe in the sun is just follow the same old rules that we all know and love. 